If you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Thing About Cars. I'm your friend and host, Mickey Desai. It is New Year's Eve, though there's no telling when this episode will go live, but just know that there is some celebrating going on in the house uh, around the table. We've got a full crew today uh, going in clockwise order around my screen. Misty, how are you? Sausage. Sausage. Tim, how goes it? Coffee. Coffee. Dave, the one and only Dave Polly. Host. <laughs> ben, how goes it, Ben? Oh, it goes. How about you? It's good. Thanks. That's our our man, Ben. And our and our guest for today is Mick Opalak. Mick, did I pronounce that correctly? Opalak is right. Opalak is right. Great. So we'll, we'll, we'll more thoroughly introduce our guest here in a minute. Let's start with a moment of grand trivia. Otto, Tim, you got something for us? Yes. Um, in the spring of 1954 in Seattle, a strange mass delusion broke out as people began reporting damage in an unprecedented number to what part of their cars. Uh, this craze led to theories of cosmic rays, sand fleas, and nuclear weapons testing, among other hypotheses affecting this part of their cars. Was that the bumpers, the hoods, the tires, or the windshields? And, you know, uh, for Mick, just so you know, we ask the question at the beginning, and then we do the uh, poll everyone for answers at the end of the episode. Right. So let me so read we'll that back one more time. because yeah, uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, in the spring of 1954 in Seattle, Washington, a strange mass delusion broke out as people began reporting damage in unprecedented numbers to what part of their cars? This craze led to theories of cosmic rays, sand fleas, and nuclear weapon testing, among other hypotheses. Uh, was the damage occurring to the bumpers, the hoods, the tires, or the windshields? Spring of 1954. Okay, we'll be thinking about that for our episode. Let's let's um, uh, start with our guest segment. Ben, you brought Mick to the table. Would you take the reins on this one? Yeah, well, I've, Mick and I have known each other for several years through the Lotus Club, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, he's been doing some racing lately. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, take it away, Mick. Tell us all about it. Sure. So for the last two and a half years, um, I've been racing in the 24 hours of Lemon Series. Um, I am not I'm teaching, not teaching I'm just the drivers. Time out, Tim. Mick, we got a bad echo and you're fading a bit. Um, any chance you've got headphones? Let me get my earbuds. That's the closest thing I got. Do you want to talk about my snack plate while we're waiting on him? While we're waiting on Mick to get his earbuds, Mick, Misty, is this the traditional Dutch snack? Well, yeah, sort of. It's party breads with, I have green pepper pate. I have yeah. old cheese salad, which is like the best thing ever. I have mini worst brooches, mini sausage brooches, helderster roquevorst, and fouet. So just in general, it's just a big fat sausage fest on my plate, which is exactly how I like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's usually how you describe the show, too. Yeah. And then this is a gin and tonic. I did pour light because it's the first one in the afternoon and I need to uh, kind of pace myself. But, you know, right. cheers, yeah. everyone. I love you. That's right. Happy New Year, Misty. And yeah. honestly, what's not to love? And Exactly. <laughs> right. And enjoy your sips of Dutch courage. There. That's right. So, Mick is how back. Let's try, let's, try, uh, let's try that again, Mick. Do I sign out? Check, check, check. One, one, two. Okay, yeah. So uh, we'll try that again. Ben had just done the introduction, and uh, Mick, you were saying you do some kind of racing? Yes. For the last two and a half years, I have been racing in the 20 Bars of Lemon series. Um, I am not the captain of the team or the car owner. I am one of their drivers, but I will tell you about it. Um, the captain is a friend of mine, and he wanted to get into racing, so we you know, entered this. Um, our vehicle – no, I'm not going to tell you our vehicle yet – uh, I'll tell you about the team. So um, uh, Dustin is the captain, as I said. Um, he bought the car and prepped it. Um, his brother, Dwayne, is our third team member, who also happens to be a VW tech at a VW dealership. Um, we sometimes race with three drivers where we switch off the driving, and sometimes we have a fourth driver. just depends. Our vehicle is a – our race car – is a 1999 Volkswagen Passat. Um, 1999 Passat. Okay. 99 Passat, 
1.8 liter turbo four front wheel drive five speed with a quarter mil well over now 255,000 miles original miles on the clock <laughs> nice. all Mick, yeah. stock yeah wow let me let me ask you to back up here for a second Mick. 24 hour yeah. of lemons let's be very clear for the audience what that means in terms of what you're allowed yes. to drive and and the limitations on what you're putting on the road yeah, I was about to step back because I didn't really introduce the race series. It's Sorry, obviously yeah. the name is a take on the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is, of course, the most famous 24-hour endurance race in the world. This is also a weekend endurance race, although they, when they started 13 or 14 years ago when the series started, they literally would race 24 hours. But it's a race for junkers, for lemons. The car you purchase to race, cannot you can't purchase it for more than $500. Wow. So they are junkyard turds, including ours. <laughs> Although I'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> so you will see everything there from a 1980 BMW, an old pickup truck. Um, there's even, uh, you name it, the gamut. It's just whatever that you can find. Um, now, when you buy the car for 500, that's all you can spend. So you can find a car that's not running for 500, but then you'd have to spend more money to get it running. So it literally, these are really crappy cars. Um, and then once you purchase it, you're able to spend as much as you want on the safety equipment because these are real race cars. So you have to gut the interior, put in a roll cage, not a cage, but a whole, you know, full cage, racing seat, harnesses, a whole fire system inside the engine bay and the interior. Um, that's that's the requirements. And then of course the drivers, we have to go full fire suits, fire boots, fire socks, fire gloves. SA rated helmet, all this, you know, the stuff. But and and, and, that, and your underwear, because that's no, an F one well, requirement. They do include the long underwear, but it's not required. You have to have those so, in F one, especially when you're racing in August in South Carolina. You're wearing sh gym shorts underneath, not long. Fair, it's, it's, it's a long it's way bad. from F one. Yeah, it's <laughs> but a long way still, from still, <laughs> safety is paramount. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, ben, no, they ben. do not play around with safety. Ben, Misty, Misty is eating. Uh, Misty is having a sausage fest. Of course, she's going to think about the underwear. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I and but, I know every everyone is just waiting on me to go to 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 to, to make my usual remark of uh, oh I didn't know Ford had their own racing league. <laughs> <laughs> Lemons, I see. Yeah. Human re human resources on Lime One, uh, Mickey. All right, so Mick, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Please continue. No, no. But the cool thing about the series is the only thing you need to race is a valid driver's license and a hundred dollars. That's it. And that's it. So you get like Dwayne, our mechanic, when he drove for us in our first race, he'd never been on a racetrack period mm -hmm. where I've been doing it for 30 years. And Dwayne, uh, Dustin's been doing it for a long time. So there's the skill level when you get on the track and you're actually racing, it's very varied. Um, the cars vary a lot too. Um, you would think those simple rules of $500 would kind of level the playing field, but there are three classes because apparently uh, $500 can go a long way with certain cars. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Others. I mean, there are AMC Gremlins out there racing, which, yes. you know, they probably got for $200 because it was sitting in a field for 30 years and they drop uh, any motor they can find in it to get it running versus uh, we just raced uh, this month at the beginning of the month at Road Atlanta. And the winner, the overall winner of the race was a about a two-generation old Maxima, you know, Maxima sedan, <laughs> Nissan Maxima. Wow. But it was crazy fast, and it was set up for racing. Oh, yeah. So you know yeah. they didn't pay $500 for that. So there's a bit of fudging, et cetera, but every race, every car gets teched, not only for the safety equipment, but they call it the liars um, or the bribers um, inspection yeah. because – They'll look at that and go, oh, you didn't pay $500 for that. So some cars will start the race with 200 penalty laps. <laughs> They're literally 200 laps nice. down at the start of the race. But it's the nature of endurance racing where whoever can turn the most laps in this amount of time wins. So we've learned through many races, consistency and reliability is so much more important than speed. Yeah, That's that it. car might be slightly, oh, not be slightly, might be a lot faster around lap. But if it breaks every half hour and they have to bring in the pits and fix something and they go back out, they're losing laps. Whereas you can buy a uh -huh. slow car, minimize your pit stops because pit stops can take anywhere from two minutes to 15, depending, you know, whereas an F1, they take two to three seconds. So unless you're Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we've learned to 
try and do like hour and a half or two hour stints for each driver, which isn't that bad. But if it's again, a summer race and you're sweating in a race suit and you've been out there for an hour and a half, you got to keep fluids in you. You got to stay focused. So we'll have shorter stints then, but in a cold winter, a cold weather race, we'll do longer stints. And in summary, it's a blast. Yeah. This is the first that's, that's fuel almost... tank. I don't even know offhand. Um, I should mention, go back to our car. So it's a 99 Passat um, and everything is stock, original stock. So when we gutted it, it now rides like a four by four because you take all that weight out of the interior. <laughs> and now, yeah. you know, so so now the, the suspension's soft and kind of high and floaty. Um, we, our goal when we started, our first race was um, the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Colorado, or uh, Kentucky, I'm sorry. And um, our goal was just to finish the race because we'd never raced this car. So we didn't know if it would last a lap or two or the whole weekend. And again, let me regress one more time. I mentioned that in the beginning, it was a true 24-hour race, but nothing could make it 24 hours. There, Everything broke. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so now they generally race eight hours on Saturday, end around 5 p.m., pick it up Sunday morning, race another eight hours. And so it's a 16-hour endurance race with a nice big break in the middle. Um, so a lot of teams spend Saturday night fixing their cars. Um, so going back to that, so in the first race, our goal was just to finish because we'd never tested the car. We'd never raced it. We didn't know how it would do. And um, on towards the end of the second day on Sunday, we lost our clutch slave cylinder. No clutch. Uh, uh, so whoops. we said, as like most teams do, you start scouring the local pep boys and advanced auto parts. But when you have a 24-year-old turd, it's hard to find parts for them. So our race was over. We didn't finish our first race. Um Second race, again, the goal was to finish, and we finished. I think that was um, Road Atlanta two years ago. Are there, um, any, are there any benefits to finishing? No. The okay. prize money only goes to the top car in each class. Okay. And there are other uh, prizes, but I don't think any money's attached to them. Um, like, there's the index of influency, they, they call it, which is the car that did the best with the crappiest car. Not necessarily one, nice. but just we can't admit, we can't believe this thing finished and did this well. That kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, so the idea award. to finishing is just for personal fulfillment's yeah. sake. You got the car to do it. Yes. Yeah. And this is definitely is a labor of love. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, there is another prize they give out called the Heroic Fix, and it's the team that basically did the craziest stuff to finish the race. <laughs> um, this last race, we we heard of a team that uh, replaced their engine twice in the same weekend. So, in other words, they showed up to the track blew their engine, found a replacement engine in a junkyard, put it in, did another whatever, 20, 30, 40 laps, blew that one up, did it all over again, and finished the race. It's it, That's the kind of spirit of it. There's a saying that it's just lemons or it's lemons because even though you're racing against these people, there's a sense of camaraderie and fun because no one's going to become an F1 driver from this. It's all just no. go out there and have fun. In fact, the winning car – uh, the number one car, they win $500 in nickels. That's the price. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And they used to, yeah. back in the day, they used to, the losing car, whoever, you know, turned the la least laps at the end of the weekend got crushed. But they don't do that anymore because apparently <laughs> some people got upset at their car getting crushed. So, yeah. Um, but it's just, it's so much fun. And uh, the spirit of lemons, like I said, um, on a, one of our, our Kershaw race, which is a uh, Carolina Motorsports Park. Um, at the end of the first day, our brakes were gone, literally metal on metal. And these were the original 250,000 mile brakes. So we said, um, let's just replace it all. So we ran to the closest city, which was an hour and a half away. We bought uh, calipers, rotors, pads, and fluid. And we stayed up till midnight in the dark, <laughs> replacing the brakes. Um, <laughs> however, the next morning we had to re-bleed the brakes and what, before the race started and we were out of fluid. And again, you don't want to drive an hour and a half. To go get. So we just started walking around the paddock and saying, hey, does anybody have any spare brake fluid we could buy off them? And this team had a brand new bottle of Motul, I think 600. And um, we're like, oh, thanks, thanks. We'll we'll bring back what we don't use and we'll pay for the rest. And they're like, keep it. It's lemons. And that's the spirit of it. It's like, <laughs> even though we're racing each other, we help each other out. Like one I thought race, you were going to um, say, keep it. This bottle of brake fluid costs $6,000. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> your... well, Motul, Motul no. RBF is not a cheap brake fluid. That's, yeah. No, it, it, yeah. And in one race, the team next to us in the paddock, um, they uh, lost their battery for some reason. And we had a spare $25 junkyard battery that we bought, and we gave it to them. And just that's lemons. Yeah. So it's, it's just so much fun. How do you lose a battery? I don't Maybe their alternator was bad or something. I don't know. All oh, I know is that the battery, we, 
Yeah, the battery. Not, gave I'm them... going to stop taking things so literal because I was like, yeah. "How do you lose a battery?" <laughs> right, it falls out on the way to the track. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, p- parts have fallen off these cars before, but um, at the end of that race, um, we thought, "Oh, they're going to come back and offer to give us our battery back." It turns out it melted in their engine bay, so they lost two batteries that race. Wow, <laughs> it is us. Yeah. 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 So Mick, it just sounds like a lot of fun. I've, I've got a couple of questions oh, that I want to ask. Sure. Ask our, yeah. our, our, our esteemed panelists, our guests, our hosts, if they have any questions. Dave, you got anything for Mick? You know, it's actually, I'm scrolling through the website right now. Um, 24 <laughs> hours of lemons. One of the things that I think is amazing looking at is, is the number of races that are taking place across the country simultaneously. Oh, yeah. There's, 20, There's about two dozen, two dozen or so over the course of the year. Yeah, the, so, the, the 23 scheduled um, all over, you know, in, in districts all over or regions all over the country. Is there like a grand survivor among each of the, the five regions where they come together and race each other? No, there's no cumulative kind of race or championship finale thing, kind of thing. But they do. Every team, you know, they get a certain amount of points or whatever for how they placed each race. So at the end of the year, they do announce the overall winner for the year and second, third, et cetera. So they do keep track of that stuff for sure. Much. Uh, does Lemon still offer, uh, I guess, prizes or points for uh, uh, unique styling or modifications? They like um, they don't award prizes, but they will penalize you. They really, really want everyone to have fun and they want every team to have a theme. Anything you want. I mean, it could be Star Wars, it could be Minions, whatever. And so the teams come up with these incredibly funny themes. And um, not only the cars do they decorate, but people wear full costumes. And if you wear them all weekend long, literally from Friday to Sunday, they they really appreciate that. And you'll get awarded for that. It's just recognition, really. But if you come with, like we did, with a dark green Passat for the first four races, we got... Well, first of all, they'll put stencils, they'll spray paint the side of your car, bad theme or those kinds of things. Um, <laughs> we weren't offensive enough to warrant any penalty laps. But finally, before this last race, our captain um, decided he wanted to do, it was time for a theme. So we did Waffle House Deli- Express Delivery Service. Yes. So, uh, nice. so, and, so the car has a giant Waffle House banner down the side, you know, et cetera. And then he built a replica of the Waffle House sign, lit sign, and dismounted to the roof. And he was worried. <laughs> he was worried about how it would affect the car aerodynamically. Yeah, like, sure. That's it. This thing is so Dude. slow. You could put a a dump truck on the roof. We're not going to get any slower. <laughs> oh my lord, that is but, so uh, awesome. We got That's tons hilarious. of comments. Everyone loved the Waffle House theme. And of course, Friday when you go get the car tech inspected. Our plan was to bring a bunch of Waffle House to hand to the judges, you know, to bribe them so we get less less penalties. But every team, they give the judges beer and toys and everything you can imagine. Can I become a judge? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Let's just, uh, can we get the thing about cars to come judge an event? <laughs> you'd have to reach out to the folks at 24 Hours of Lemons. Uh, Don't tempt me. They, do have the same, they have the same crew of about five or six, maybe seven um officials who show up to every race and they are the judges and they run the whole thing and they're kind of regional so we see the same guys in the southeast and people probably in the northwest see the same group of judges etc but they do travel around quite a bit this really just underscores how far we will people in this show will go for beer and waffles that's yeah, right pretty much although <laughs> i was gonna say is, is it possible for us to sponsor your car and and you attach phil the anthropomorphic oh. bollard <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. That makes me think of, so they, like I said earlier, they take safety very seriously. So you can get black flagged for, you know, in, unsafe driving, um, something's hanging off your car, the usual racing stuff. But if you're just a jerk on the track, they'll black flag you and the penalties can be hilarious. Um, I don't remember what the offense was, but they had this big iron pig and they would pull you in, weld it to your hood, like where the hood ornament would be, and you had to finish the race with this big pig on your hood. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Another one, I, I just took video of this at the last race. If you do something egregious, like passing under a yellow flag, you know, you did so they'll pull you in. <laughs> they pull the driver out of the car. They strap him to the roof <laughs> of his own race car with saran wrap. <laughs> and they make him drop they make them drive around the paddock for about 10 minutes with a bullhorn saying i will not pass under yellow flag i will not pass <laughs> and then they let him get off get in keep racing but he just lost 15 20 laps by doing that so and everyone in the paddock who's wrenching on their cars watching him slowly go in circles is yelling shame shame, shame. <laughs> it's 
Hilarious. Tim, Tim, we, we, we need to contact the FIA. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, actually what, a- I would, what, what I would love to see just as like a one-off documentary is Kimi Raikkonen participating oh. in this with all of the radio. <laughs> it would be great because we yes. do that. Our teams, we don't have fancy little radios, although we do have them. We don't use them. We end up just going to our cell phone. So we'll have earbuds in our ears. So we are constant in contact with the pit. Like, you know, I'm going to stop for gas or, but half the time it's that a-hole just cut me off or somebody <laughs> dive bomb me, or I'm going to dive bomb this guy into turn one and see what happens. Or I just got hit. I think I got black flag. You know, it's just a way of communications with the pit. Kimmy, Valtteri yeah. and Hulk. Uh, Alonzo. <laughs> oh, a- uh, yeah. You, you cannot forget Fernando Alonzo. Uh, that, that man, he, he cracks me up. I, I, it just absolutely kills me. So, yeah, we are rapidly running out of time. I hate to interrupt, but I have my, my last question sort of piggybacks on, on the whole judging thing. If, and I will, I'll contact them to see if we can guest judge or something. Um, but is, are there other ways that the thing about cars can come play with you? I think it would become to, uh, kind of fun to at least to try to help out or be, be part of an event or something like that. That would be a nice thing to explore. Absolutely. Um, if you're talking just about lemons, you know, well, we've been very lucky. Our car broke down once and that was mm-hmm. when the slave cylinder went out. Some teams, they show up, they do two laps and they spend the whole weekend just wrenching on their cars. Mm-hmm. Um, so they finish the weekend with two laps. So they're probably way down at the bottom, but um, you always need help wrenching, um, getting running, getting supplies, getting food, et cetera. Although usually there's a, a, a food truck at the track, but um, it can be a fun, fun weekend or a long, tedious one. If, you know, some some electrical issue you can't track down and the car just sure. whatever. But yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I guess I, I would have to just send like packages of stroke waffles because in case you missed it, Mick, everybody else is based in Georgia and nobody, okay. nobody currently based in Georgia is actually born and raised in Georgia. <laughs> I was born and raised in Georgia and I'm currently based in the Netherlands. Okay, nice. It's a so, really bad restraining order. It's yeah, a terrible it's, thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, <clears throat> it's pretty significant. Speaking of, of restraining orders, Mickey, I want you to know there is a Waffle House Princess t-shirt and my birthday is in April. <laughs> <laughs> what do you and, say, and, Misty? <laughs> and Misty, just so you know, we can now get strope waffles at our local Costco. Yeah, but you can't get Albert Hein strope waffles. Nay. So dish. <laughs> All right, Mick. Bent. The questions I told I may have warned you about this, and if I haven't, I've apologized. We always ask our guests uh, four questions at the end of every guest segment. Uh, the first question is, "What's your dream car?" Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, the knee jerk traditional one would be the McLaren F1, greatest supercar mm-hmm. ever made. But I, as I get older, get a little more practical, and I love. A Miata. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had three of them when I was in my 20s uh, oh. up till I got married. And I lived on those. Those were my pickup truck, my grocery store, my daily driver, my sports car, my track car. They never broke. They're so much fun. And just this year in January, I got my fourth <laughs> one. I have a 2023 RF GT. Love it. Oh, and my I'm God. Fixing it up. Misty just got moist. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I happen to own a 2016. Ah, yeah. I, I love a Miata. <laughs> and mine I've was the a... first one in the town that I live in. And then I joined the podcast and we interviewed two of the founding designers, Tina Hall. The Miata. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tim Hall, Tom Hall, and Bob um, Hall, Tom and Ma- um, Tom Dean, Dean, Dean Case. Dean Case. Okay. Dean Case. And Dean I was, was told in no team. uncertain terms that I was not allowed to put a luggage rack on the, on the trunk of my car. Her name is Claudette. She is soul red. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> so I have to take her next week to get her windshield replaced because I hit, hit a star and it went thunk. And I was like, mm. I said things what? that were not family friendly. You but hit as a, a star? No, I, I, I got a star. I, 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 I caught oh, a rock. Okay, yes. And then was right. driving home and just saw it go thunk and had a problem. I know we're running short on time. But as a third runner up real quick, I have to say I also have an Evora 400. And I cannot say enough good things about the Avora 400. It's a great yeah. car. Well, you do know, Mick, that the engine sound of the MX-5 is based on the Lotus Elan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, right. a, I'm a Miata guy way back. Good. <laughs> Mick, question number two. Where is your next road trip going to be? Probably to Austin, Texas. Um, okay. The National Lotus Club has a national meet every year, and it bounces around uh, the country. This year was Knoxville. It's been... Vegas, you know, the Northeast, 
everywhere. It, it bounces around. And then next next year is going to be Austin. So I plan on driving out there for that. Very cool. Yeah, Coda? Um, no, Coda is a little pricey. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, ben, are you going to go to Austin with the Yellow Lotus? Uh, I doubt it, but you never know. Yeah. Well, okay. have, you know, the car doesn't have air conditioning, so um, I wouldn't drive it out there if I did. 260 <laughs> air conditioning. What the hell's wrong with you, Ben? <laughs> Toughen up. Woman up. Ovary up. <laughs> HR calling on line two again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mick, what's the most fascinating thing you've seen either on the road or in someone's garage? Fascinating. That's a hard term on the road. <sighs> I, yeah, yeah. Can you clarify that? Because I mean, I've been, I've been in the car scene for 30 years. So I've been on a million mountain drives, cross country road trips, track days. Um, I've seen it. All. Oh, well, just something that stands out as funny is I was doing a track day once at Barber in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and someone had a Honda Pilot, which is a big boxy SUV, but it was lowered and gutted and cased, and they were tracking it. It was fascinating. But you'll see all kinds of fascinating stuff if you go if you race lemons. Go to the 24hourslemons.com, and you'll see someone took an airplane fuselage, yeah. put a drivetrain in it, and they're racing it. Nice. That's nuts. As a race. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, the fourth Got question is up. always something random and, and, and uh, silly. Uh, so, oh, gosh, time warning here. Um, what is your biggest kitchen fail? Kitchen? This is a kitchen. new one. This is a new one. Yeah, I don't think um, I've asked this one. On more than one occasion, I've under seasoned things. <gasps> things just come, the recipe <laughs> sounds awesome and then it's bland. And I'm like, you know, you're kind of supposed to salt and pepper at each step. You can't just throw a little salt on the top at the end. You got to season as you go, and it makes the dish much better. Yeah. So you're a, you're a foodie as well. Is that is that what I'm hearing, Mick? I love to cook. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very cool, Mick. Thank you for joining us. I I hope we can see Absolutely. you on the track someday. We would love to join you for lemons, uh, in any capacity. And sure. uh, 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 real quick before well, we wrap up, spectating is with, allowed. Yeah. Spectating is loud. Anyone can come out and watch the race. Yeah, but we're not just anybody. <laughs> Good point. We Good have an point. anthropomorphic bollard. We have an anthropomorphic bollard. Exactly. We would pl- proudly fly that on our car. Yeah. So or we film. got nine minutes I left. See, or I see more trauma coming in. Eight minutes left. Uh, with And let me ask one question. For, I've got a question for Ben and Tim, and then we have trivia. So I hope we have enough time. Let me see if we can ramrod our way through this. But Ben, yeah. you posted that thing about the Miata with the with the Jaguar engine in it. When the when the Miata first came out, somebody put a five-liter Ford engine in it. Yeah, I didn't know of that. Well, <laughs> lots of engines have been in them. Uh, anything that can fit probably has been put in one. But that uh, the Jaguar V6 swap is really cool because now does it sound great. But it's a ton of power, and because the original engine is an iron block and the Jaguar is all aluminum, it doesn't really change the weight. Got it. All yeah. Right. Yeah, I Speaking knew Misty was going to have a coronary about the Ford. Yeah, thing. I have problems yeah. with that. Yeah. It's not like- the, the, original, the original one you mentioned is called the Monster Miata, and it had yeah. flared fenders. It was only later uh, – that they didn't sell as well as they hoped, but then later FM Flying Miata came out with their V8 kits yep. which so, don't use a ford they use an ls but they also oh, because okay. they're aluminum they don't have much of a nose weight penalty at all that seems crazy but yes um misty has a severe ford allergy um yeah i do yeah. and i inherited that from my grandfather who yep. was a mechanic in the backwoods of north georgia and uh, mm. somehow managed to uh, always drive an opal i've never really understood that but um but yeah i've only owned one one ford it was a 2000 mustang because that's what my wife was driving when I met her, and it was crap. Yeah. <laughs> one, one right. of the worst cars. Justified. Yeah. Justified. Right, Tim, worst cars. My quick yeah. question for you before we wrap trivia is, you posted this thing on Facebook about the fastest lap in racing history. It was a, a qualifying lap, solo driver. It was not in direct competition with anyone else. But but why does a solo lap get the attention? Why aren't all cars going 241 miles an hour? Uh, well, it was uh, qualifying for the – 2000 IndyCar race at uh, Fontana Motor Speedway. Um, so typically, uh, when you are driving a race car, either you start the race with your fuel tanks full and brand new tires. So you have the weight penalty of a fuel tank, a full fuel tank, uh, but you know, the tires are their optimal when they're new. So uh, then you get to the end of the stint where you now have old tires, but a light fuel tank, and 
you know, you, your lap time equates about the same. Uh, this was in qualifying on brand new tires and a low fuel load. Uh, and at a point where the confluence of uh, engine technology and chassis and aerodynamic rules had all come together uh, in, the, in the IndyCar series. And uh, the, uh, the qualifying lap was at 241 and some change miles per hour. Uh, and that was driven by uh, Gilles de Ferran, uh, who actually passed away uh, two days ago um, oh. from a, a heart attack uh, while at a at a track day with his son. Um, and he was he was actually uh, won the IndyCar uh, championship twice and the Indy 500 in, I believe, 2003. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a great man, great race car driver, uh, who also got his degree in engineering. So he really knew his way around, uh, uh, a race car more, more than a lot of drivers do, but yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, our listeners can't see it, but the new waffle house delivery vehicle is now, um, mixed background on our screen. I, that is, that is really I cool. Love that. I that love is really that. cool. That is, that's Tim, pretty sweet. And the amazing thing is all that paint was done with stencils and rattle cans up close. It looked it. really professional, but. Um, yes, it was all just. I believe it. I, right. I would. I would show up in my Waffle House Princess <laughs> T-shirt and a tiara. <laughs> Tim, take us away. Let's close with trivia. Okay, we got four minutes. Uh, so let's uh, take it from the top. The question is and was and shall be. In the spring of 1954 in Seattle, a strange mass delusion broke out as people began reporting damage in unprecedented numbers to what part of their cars? Uh, this craze led to theories of the damage being caused by cosmic rays, sand fleas, and thermonuclear weapons testing, among other hypotheses. Uh, so was the damage happening to bumpers, hoods, tires or windshields and dave what is your guess on that windshields okay mickey i'm gonna guess tires because you know sand fleas are on the ground uh tires are susceptible to other things so i'm guessing tires okay misty i'm gonna go with windshields because that's on my mind this week okay <laughs> ben i'm gonna go with tires and i would love to see a confluence of you know cosmic rays sand fleas and whatever the other one was that would be really <laughs> awesome right okay. that's what i'm our expecting for mick. a new year's eve party tonight yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what our i guess mick what is your best guess it's windshield okay right and yes the answer is windshields oh. and it uh basically was just people had you know not really noticed before that you know, as uh, as you tend to drive along, you get uh, all kinds of stone chips and sandblasting from uh, stuff coming up. And just someone started to notice it and mentioned it to and they told two friends and they told two friends and they told two friends. And all of a sudden, everyone is going out and inspecting their windshields and, you know, not realizing this is just, you know, the nam normal wear and tear that happens to a windshield. Uh, <laughs> but, Very yes. good. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and now I'm going to go check my windshield. So, Mick, thank you for being <laughs> our guest today. Uh, we hope to see you again in, in person at some point. That would be very cool. And uh, in the I'm meantime, awesome. Yes, thank you for joining us. Um, you for, should do for, a stroke yep. waffle themed car. Stroke <laughs> waffle. Or, or a delft blue. Well, while Misty is, is going on about that, thanks to all our listeners, as always, for joining us. Uh, we will have another episode for you again in about a week. And I know it's going to be sometime in February before this episode goes live. But Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to all of our Thing About Cars people. Uh, 2023, for me at least, has been better because of you. And uh, I will look forward to having more of that in 2024. Take it's care, everybody. Ciao, y'all. Ciao, y'all. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.